Hi and welcome to the instructional video for our Scrappy Races Grand Prix car. This is a great little build and I can't wait to show you. So this is how it's going to work. First of all we're going to cover some health and safety stuff that you really need to know about. Then I'm going to show you how to build this really cool car. And then at the end I've got some maker tips just for you. So let's get started. These are our five top tips for safety if you're making one of our kits. One. Pointy bits, you've got to look out for those pointy bits. Uh, because our kits are so awesome, in your creative genius you might find bits and bobs and you might want to use them to stick them on a car or a character, but a little piece like this must be sanded, nicely rounded all over like this so it's nice and safe for you. Um, little pointy bits like this, make sure they're sanded all the way around. You want them to be nice and smooth. Two, wires. These little aluminium wires are awesome and they can be used for ears and tails and all sorts of creative uses, but they are sharp. So if you're going to use these wires, you must make sure that you get a piece of sandpaper and you sand the ends off like that to get rid of any sharp bits. Um, if you're using them as a tail or something that's going to stick out, you must, using the bead in your pack, stick a bead on the end like this. If you're not going to do that, then you must fold it over like this so that there's no sticky up bits like this. It's really important. Make sure you get this one right. Three, sanding. I know sanding's a bit boring, kids, but you've got to do it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Pieces of wood, when they've been cut just with a saw, they have very sharp edges and they are prone to splintering. If you were to catch this on a bench or something like that, it can actually break a huge piece of wood off and leave a sharp splinter. So it's really important that we sand the edges of the piece of wood. This sharp corner here is called the aris. So we, when we're sanding, we're taking the aris off. And you only need a few strokes like this, and there we go, that's the aris taken off. It doesn't take a lot, but you do have to do every edge, every single one. The other thing to look out for is where we've drilled holes, there might be little spiky bits sticking out like this. So before you put anything in those holes, make sure you get those spiky bits off. A little bit of rub rub with a sandpaper like this, and there we go, it's all done. Take your time with this one because it makes a real difference to how your character looks. Four, super glue. Super glue is amazing and sticks things in seconds, but it also sticks your fingers to pieces of wood in seconds as well. And that's why we include gloves with all of our kits. Make sure that you wear them. And kids, if your grown up has popped off for a cup of tea, don't use the super glue. Don't use it because that's how you end up in A&E with a big piece of wood stuck to your hand. Be safe with the super glue, guys. Five, safety equipment. Um, sounds obvious, but if you're doing this on your kitchen table, make sure you put a suitable covering down so you don't get it covered in super glue or glue or something like that. That's the first thing. Second thing is, if you're using one of these or a hammer, any kind of hammer, you should be wearing some safety specs as well so that if you happen to do this, uh, you're gonna be fine, okay? So get yourself some safety specs um, if you're going to use the hammers. Uh, lastly, this is about sanding. Um, we just want to make sure that you're sanding in a well-ventilated area. Some of the really fine particles of wood can be damaging to your lungs, so you must make sure really you do it outside, or you might want to get yourself a suitable face covering, like this one here with the red bit in the middle. Okay, that's it. Have fun building our kits. Okay then, so let's get into making our Grand Prix car. You'll find in your kit you've got a maker card, giving you a link to this video, um, some safety information, and then we've got here the base for the car, the engine block, some wheels, some wires, some sandpaper, our little bag of accessories, and all these little bits and bobs here. So let's start off with sanding all of our components. What we need to do is get a piece of sandpaper. If you've got a block lying around, anything will do. Um, you can just wrap the sandpaper in a block and I think that makes life a lot easier. Hang on to it like this and then you can use this part here. So I'm just gonna shove these things out of the way. The most important thing to tell you is you want to take off any sharp edges. It's really important and any little bits like this where it's been drilled, we wanna get those out so you don't get any splinters. So what we need to do to take the edges off is hold the sandpaper at 45 degrees like this and just go back and forward. So we're just going to go back and forward a few times over all the edges like this. Okay, and then that's the sharp edge or the aris taken off. And then we can sand over like this. You can see that puts sandpaper in the holes, but don't worry about that. You see, look, it's, uh, it's covered up the hole there, but don't worry about that. It'll work fine. We can do the bottom as well. Okay, 
Okay, so you want to do this for all of the parts, okay? So rather than you standing here watching me do it, I'm just gonna do it like this. Ah, that's it, all done, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> In real life, it took me about 20 minutes. So all my parts are sanded now, all the sharp edges are off, and we are ready to go. So clear your sawdust away and get your wheels first. Um, it's up to you, you can um, stick all the stuff on and then do the wheels, um, but I like to do the wheels first, so that's what I'm gonna do. So if you get your accessories pack, open that up and see what's in there. Now we've got some things like headlights and triangles, and look our little F1 steering wheel here. Um, or maybe you want to use a button instead, it's totally up to you. But the key things you need out of this pack are these little screws here and the washers. So you're gonna get, oh sorry, there's big washers and small washers. So put the big washers to one side. And there are small washers. So we're gonna get a small washer. We're gonna put it through the wheel, like so. And then, we are going to put one on the other side, and that's to stop it rubbing against the car. And we're going to put it over the hole like this, hold it in position, and then we're going to get a crosshead screwdriver once we've turned it a little bit. We're going to get a crosshead screwdriver just like this one and screw it all the way in. So if you need some help with this, no probs, just get an adult to kind of hold it in position for you. <clears throat> now you want to screw it not all the way in, you want to leave it a little bit out, otherwise it'll stop the wheel from turning. So I haven't gone all the way in here, and then just check, does the wheel spin freely? So it does, that's done. So you do that for all four wheels. Ta-da! Okay, that's my four wheels on. All four of them spin freely, so now we can move on to the next part. Okay then, so for the next part, what I'm gonna do first of all is put the wire in for the cage for my little man. So what we want to do is just make a nice bend in this wire. It's really easy to bend. And try and get it kind of equal if you can, like that. It's not quite equal, but there you go. Okay, I've just moved it around now. And that should be about right. Now, that's gonna be a pretty tall little uh, thing for our man here. So I think we're gonna cut that off. Now, you can use a pair of scissors to do this, um, or you can use just a little pair of long nose pliers like these. You can use the cutters on the inside. Now. I think it needs to be about so high, so I'm going to cut it off here and then match it on this side here. Okay, that's pretty good, I think. So now we're going to get this over the holes like so and just pop it in. Okay, so that should push in there nice and tightly like that. Um, if you want to, you can put a little bit of glue on there, then push the wire in and it will help hold it in position. But that gives us the starting point for our car. So next then, I think we should do the engine. Now we want to get the wires into this engine, so what we're gonna do is just hold it over the hole and just twist it as we push it in. Okay, the other way to do it is to hold the piece of wire about an, a little bit back here from the edge of the uh, wire, about a centimeter back, and hold it and just twist and push like this. And then this way you know that it's definitely gone into the wood. Now for the engine blocks, what you want to do is bend the wires down like so, and then cut them off at about the right height. So I'm gonna use my cutters, get in there, a bit shorter than you might think. And there we go, that's two done. Okay then, so that's the engine block done, and that's ready now to attach to the car. So our driver's gonna be here, so why don't we put the engine right behind the driver? Okay, so that's going to go there. Now, before we go any further, we've got our little uh, body here for our man, and you can tell it's that, because it's got two holes in them there for his arms. So I've got a couple of little bits of wire left here, so I'm gonna use my pliers just to shove that in a bit. And the same on this side. Now it does look like the holes are closed up sometimes, but don't worry about that, just push the wire and it will open up again for you. Okay, so that's my little man, I'm going to bend his hands forward like this, so he can be driving our car. Okay then, so that's that, and then obviously his little uh, helmet head goes on there. Hi! Okay, so he's going to go in this position here, we can stick him on in a minute. So the only thing left now is the, um, the exhausts here, they're going to go at the back. That's gonna look pretty cool. Now then we've got these components here. Now these, this is the spoiler, or the bit that goes at the back. Now what you want to do is attach these pieces like this. Okay, you can see that from on top, and then they stick onto the back of the car like this. Now the spoiler is as wide as the wheels, so you don't want to put them right on the very edge like that. They need to be in a little bit, okay? So I'll give you a fair warning before we start doing gluing. 
So before we move on then, I need to get some glue. So uh, I'm gonna get some super glue and get my gloves on. Okay then, so glues. You can use PVA for this, of course you can, um, but we definitely recommend super glue because it's just a lot quicker and a lot easier, especially when you're putting the spoiler together. Um, if you're using PVA, then you're just gonna have to like hold this here until the PVA kind of tacks up and then just leave it to set and then the same when you put it on the car. But we're gonna use super glue anyway. So I'm gonna start off uh, by attaching the engine block. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on the bottom there, you don't need too much and pop the engine block into place. So that's pretty good. And then count to 30 and wait for that to set. Okay then, as soon as that is done, um, we want to stick these on. So you can sand the bottom of these exhausts here flat and it does kind of help them stay in one place. It is a bit easier. So if you want to do that, go ahead. But if not, you can just stick them on. Okay then, so that's my engine and my exhausts. So now I'm gonna move on to my spoiler. Uh, to do my spoiler, I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. I'm just gonna hold that. And remember what I said, not all the way at the edge, you just want it in a little bit and then hold that in position. Now it's just as important that you get these lined up when you're doing it. Sorry, I'll do it closer on camera so you can see. Um, so I've got that one's now stuck. I'm just going to move on now to the uh, the second support for the spoiler. Put this bit of glue on the end here. Now I want to make sure that this is about the same distance away. You can use a pencil to mark it if you want to. Okay, that's got it. And finally we want to put the spoiler on the back of the car like this. So put a bit of glue on the bottom. When you're putting it onto the end grain of wood, you want to put a bit more on than you would normally because it sinks into the end grain. Okay, and then you just put that in the position that you want it. I'm going to have it there. Okay then, now make sure you give that enough time to set before you move on because they can fall off. Make sure that's set properly and then you can move on. Okay then, so now I'm going to put my little, uh, my little man together. So I'm just going to glue a bit on the bottom of his body here. And I'm going to pop that on the car. So we want him right in front of the cage. Remember to allow enough room for his head. Okay, and then another little bit on top. Okay then, and that is his uh, helmet on. So now we need a steering wheel, don't we? We need some kind of steering wheel structure. So what we've got for that, um, in your kit, you will have had a little triangle. And we basically can put that in front of him with the little steering wheel on it. So you can choose to stick on an F1 steering wheel like this, or a Grand Prix steering wheel, I should say, um, right in front of him. And that's gonna look a little bit like like this. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna, first of all, stick the steering wheel on. So get a little bit of glue and just let that set. Now you can see this triangle here, you can have it any shape you want, you can sand it to any shape that you like. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some more glue on the bottom of that. I'm gonna put it right in front of his hands. Okay then, so that is our Grand Prix car finished. What do you reckon guys? I think he looks pretty cool, don't you? So now you can write on here, maybe your family name and then power. So for us, it would be Ash and Co Power, um, or you could do something else, whatever you like. Um, you've got all these bits and bobs left over here. So maybe you wanna put kind of spikes on the top of yours using these two things, or maybe it's got spikes at the front to push your competitors out of the way. Ugh. Or maybe it's got another exhaust coming out of the top. There's loads of bits and bobs here for you to do whatever you want with. So have fun with those. Um, if you can't think of anything else to do, then why not make a little character? Um, this could be legs. It's two little peg legs like this. And then maybe uh, you've got two arms, these little circles here. It could be headlights or arms. Um, and then you could make his face with that. Why not make something really cool with all the bits and bobs? Okay, well, I hope you have great fun making your very own Grand Prix racer. And don't forget to send us a photo when you're finished. We love seeing all the finished cars. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.
Okay guys, so the first tip we've got is how to get these little wires in. Now, um, if your wire's kind of bent like this, that's gonna cause you a problem. So try your best to get it as straight as possible. But especially if it's bent right on the very end here, that's super important. So once you've got it nice and straight, then the best way is to get a pair of pliers and hold the wire about a centimeter, maybe a bit less, a centimeter back from the edge and hold it very, very tightly. Then when you're trying to poke it into one of these holes, you put it over the hole and you push and twist at the same time. Push and twist, push and twist, push and twist. Now I know that that's gone in at least one centimeter. Then you can pull your pliers back a little bit and do the same thing again. Push, 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 push. Now that's in far enough. Now for these engine blocks from there, I can just bend it down and then I can use the other side of the pliers just to cut off the wire there. Okay, so that's a really good tip. Um, if you're doing the, uh, a tail for an animal, same thing applies. Hold it about a centimetre back and then get it into the hole and you just twist it like this. And then that way, look, you know it's gone in and then it's really in there nice and solid. Then you can bend it and make your tail. That's tip number one. So for the next tip, a common problem we often see is when they've got a bit worn out, the dowels that go into the hole can be a bit loose and they can kind of fall out. Um, so we've got one here that's kind of a bit loose. You can see here, there's no kind of friction there at all. So one of the ways that you can fix this is either to glue one side of the dowel into the head like this, but then the other side can still go into the other hole where it's nice and tight. And then that way you've glued it one side but not in the other and then you can still move the head around like this. That's one way to fix it. Um, should it be loose on both sides, then there's a little trick that we use in the workshop here. And that's just to get some super glue like this, put a tiny bit of super glue, just a little bit like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me try and focus the camera. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit of super glue. So you can put some on one side and then just leave it to one side, somewhere it's not gonna stick, I don't know, on a piece of wood or something like that, and just let that dry. Okay, now when that's dry, that's then widened your dowel. And the next time you put it into the hole, um, it'll be nice and tight in there for you. But remember, you've got to make sure the glue has dried and it might take half an hour or so, unless you've got one of those activator sprays you can use to set the glue instantly. Okay, so that's our top tip for if the dowel's loose in the hole. Okay then, so our next tip is about using PVA. Um, if you've bought one of these from us, you have to unscrew the main lid first and there'll be a little cap in there. You have to take that out if you're wondering why the glue's not coming out. Okay, and just screw that on like that. Now, PVA is perfectly fine to use in our kits, but obviously it takes a lot longer to set. Um, so if you wanted to glue this dowel into the head, you could put a bit of glue on here, glue it into the head like this, and then you just have to leave it for I don't know, maybe 25 minutes, half an hour, something like that, um, and then you can carry on. Um, but it's a bit more tricky when you come, say you want to stick on um, a piece of wire for the mouth or something like that, and you want to use PVA for that, you have to put quite a lot of PVA on, make sure that the mouth is nice and flat, but then you have to leave it like overnight. Um, probably up to 24 hours to set properly for each component that you put on there. Now in that time, the components can move around. So our top tip for you is to get some masking tape and just put it over the components to hold them in place. And then um, whenever it's dry, you can take the masking tape off and the masking tape won't stick to the PVA. Top tip if you're using PVA. Okay, this is our top tip for if you are using super glue. Super glue is absolutely fantastic, but you must always, always wear your gloves just in case. But if you stick yourself to something and you've got a glove on, it's easy, you can take your glove off. You stick your finger, not so easy. So when you're sticking two pieces of wood together, maybe you want to stick these two pieces, you put a little bit of super glue on and you put the two pieces together, wait for about 30 seconds and then no problem, it will be set. Um, it's a bit more tricky when you're sticking things on like, uh, like washers here or buttons. So I just want to show you the best trick to do this. Now the key thing is don't use too much super glue. So let's go for the top here. Now I always put the super glue on the thing that I'm gonna stick on first. I've done it in a little round shape there. I don't know if you can see how much I've put on there, but. There, just a really tiny, tiny amount. And then I'm gonna get my washer and just kind of drop it on top, like that. Just drop it on and that's it. Um, alternatively, you could always use a pair of long nose pliers like we've got in our kits, our um, essential tool kits. They're really handy too. So let's just stick this one on like this. 
Now I'm going to use these long nose pliers here. Going to hold the thing like this, and then again, just drop it on. There we go. And then just tap it just to make sure it's on. Now the key thing to that is not using too much super glue. If you use too much, it'll spread out everywhere and it'll take ages to set. The other way you can do it, of course, is to hold the item that you're gonna stick on in a, uh, a pair of pliers like this, or tweezers would do as well, and then put a bit of glue on the part itself. See, just a, a little bit there. I'm gonna put this on as a nose, just gonna drop it, and it's not come off, so just use the lid of the super glue. Oh, there we go. Push it down. There we go. Leave that to dry now. You know, give it a good few minutes to dry, and then everything will be uh, it'll be good. Okay, that's our super glue top tip. Our next top tip is about sanding and how you should sand. It's probably the most important part of your build, the bit that will really set your character apart and make it look amazing. When something's sanded properly, it really does look fantastic. So this is a piece of Oroco here, and you can see it has kind of lines running down the wood like this. That's called the grain. Now when you're sanding, you want to sand with the grain because you're essentially putting scratches in the wood. If you sand this way across the grain, you're gonna put scratches all the way across here, and that might be something that you don't want. So when you're sanding like this, you should always sand back and forward. And the key thing is to take off sharp edges like this. So all you need to do is back and forward like this, back and forward, all the way over and pay special attention to those sharp edges all the way over all the way over like this then of course you want to do the end edges too so i'm going to come across like this across like that same here okay and then one more to go There you go. Now that's the minimum amount of sanding you should be doing with a block like this. But of course you can get your sandpaper, wrap it round a block like this, and use that as a little sanding block. And these are really handy. So say you want to do a component like this, you want to sand with the grain, but you can see here this component's pretty weak, so we've got to be careful. So if this were me, I would put it on a bench like this, or just on a flat surface, and then I can work it back and forward. So I'm going with the grain, just nice and gently, not putting too much pressure on the part. Nice and gently like this, sand, sand, sand. Okay, great. Okay, that'll do. And then of course we want to take off the aris or the sharp edge. So I'm just gonna work my way around the part. Make sure that on uh, parts that might break like this, you hold it nice and tightly so we're not putting too much pressure on it because we don't want to break our pieces. And then I'm gonna go back, do the other bit. Okay, well you get the idea, okay? And then you can finish off the whole part like that. Now there is one other technique that I'd really like to show you, and that is putting your sandpaper flat onto a bench. Younger kids tend to get on quite well with this one, okay? So if I want to sand the back of this piece, put the sandpaper on a bench. You can even tape it down if you really want to. Um, put the uh, piece you want to sand on top of it and rub it back and forward, like this. If I want to do my edges, I can just turn it, rub the edge, turn it, rub the edge. And that's a good way of sanding components too. So there you go, they're my tips on sanding. Have fun guys.